Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship coming to you today from the sanctuary of the Norwich Congregational Church United Church of Christ here in the Green in Norwich, Vermont. And whether you are joining us here in person, all bundled up, I wish everybody could see. It's chilly in here being safe and distance with the windows open. Whether you're joining us uh, from near or far, whether you're familiar with us or whether you feel like you're a stranger, whether you know why you joined us this morning or whether you're simply curious and you were here, we're glad, very much glad that you have done so. As you can see from the cover quote on the bulletin this morning, we're going to explore what happens when life brings you to your knees. That has an ominous sound, I realize, but what if being on your knees brings gratitude and awe? We will remember in scripture this morning how Abram and Sarah traded everything dear and familiar to them for a life on the road full of purpose and blessing with God. All they brought with them, all they knew was the promises of God. And that was enough and more. We have a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, as I think everybody knows, Avery Post service is on Sunday, November 1st at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. First of all, remember that's the day of daylight savings time change, November 1st. So fall back, 2 o'clock means 1 o'clock? 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock, got it, got it, thank you, I know it's right, 2 o'clock means 3 o'clock, okay, good, thank you, I got that right. Now, we sent out uh, to you, if you're not going to be here in person, we sent out to everybody a registration link for the Zoom service, and that's going to the national headquarters in Cleveland, because they're hosting the Zoom meeting while we're filming it here. So that registration link has been sent to you. If you have not seen it, let us know, and we'll send you the registration link um, again. And from that registration link, you'll get the invite to the Zoom service, and you'll also get a copy of the bulletin for uh, Avery Post service on Sunday, November 1st. A couple other things. Stewardship letters uh, for the fall season have gone out. We hope that you'll consider. Uh, we're looking at some tough times. Hope that... Uh, you will consider being as generous as you possibly uh, can. And also, folks, I was thinking this morning, I have a payment to make on my pledge that I need to catch up on. I hope that if you're thinking about your pledge for 2020, you will also attempt to catch up so that we can complete this year uh, in as good a financial position as we can as we move in to the new fiscal year next uh, in 2021. Um, another announcement. I understand we've been having some difficulties with the Zoom service, those folks that are in seeing us by Zoom. So we're trying a slightly different and more powerful, perhaps, laptop this morning to see uh, if we can fix the problem with the Zoom uh, services. So we need some feedback. Those of you in our Zoom audience, please let us know today how it goes because we really, really want you to 
be able to enjoy and feel comfortable with the service that you see through Zoom. And finally, um, Chipper brought this uh, to me this morning in the paper and uh, was a, an announcement, uh, a, an advertisement, excuse me, from the Vermont Conference of the United Church of Christ. And I really thought it was quite lovely and it's a great invitation. It's called Grasping for Much Needed Grace. And the Vermont Conference is inviting us, inviting us all to be in prayer um, around this election time. It's a nonpartisan prayer, um, but it is a prayer nonetheless for how we are experiencing this election season. And so it actually began on the 15th, but we can catch up, and we will today in our prayers, um, through this final weeks of the uh, presidential election. Uh, Election season as we petition God for wisdom, patience, courage, healing, justice, and peace for all. Are there any other announcements that I've forgotten this morning? And Ginny, would you lead us into worship with call to worship, please? Please join me in the responsive call to worship, followed by the unison opening prayer. Give thanks to God for God's goodness. God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to God, to whom we call in trouble. God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to God, who lifts us from our knees. God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to God, who makes us the blessing we seek. Let us tell of God's word with gratitude and awe. Amen. Shelter us not, O Lord, with walls that exclude doubt, but with open doors that welcome light and trust. Amen. Our hymn printed in the bulletin is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us.
scripture reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. I'd like to begin the sermon by having us uh, read on the cover of the bulletin, read the Jeff Foster quote that's there, because it's the key to understanding our sermon today. Um, and um, so I wonder if you could just read it with me. Uh, it begins with the word life will eventually, words life will eventually, with me please. Life will eventually bring you to your knees. Either you'll be on your knees cursing the universe and begging for a different life, or you'll be brought to your knees by gratitude and awe, deeply embracing the life you have been given, too overwhelmed by the beauty of it all to stand or even speak. Either way, they're the same knees. So when Jeff Foster writes uh, that life does eventually bring us uh, to our knees, I think that most of us know what he's talking about. There are moments in our lives that bring us to a full stop and we find ourselves on our knees, if not literally, then kind of on the floor of our souls. And such moments can arise from personal or public reasons and they may involve despair, and I think most of us understand what that's like. They may also, as Foster points out, involve gratitude and awe. Same knees, different view. Now, in my experience, gratitude and awe don't just happen. I mean, we've all experienced these beautiful moments that show us a life that's so much larger than our concerns and hopes and dreams. But to live from a place of gratitude and awe daily, hourly, this is learned. It takes practice. Think of Abram and his wife Sarah, unmentioned here, but very present and prominent behind the words of the scripture this morning. Hearing the promises and blessings of God brings Abram, here in the text, this is the early part, older part of the text, where he's called Abram, not Abraham, same person, Abram, and Sarah, I'm sure, to their knees. Full stop. The old life falling away at the new and larger possibility. But then there was the getting up off their knees, the gathering up of the necessities for the journey, and then the first step, and then after it a second, and a third. You see, here to me is where the miracle lie, lies to make to make of the daily necessities, the hourly steps, a source of quiet amazement. Why? Because once we make a decision, once we make the decision that gratitude and awe are our function, then the world we see changes. The earth seems to tilt on its axis away from cynicism and despair. You see, here's the thing. We don't figure out reasons in order to have gratitude and all, we commit to gratitude and all 
And then the reasons come. That's how Abram and Sarah got up and went, not knowing their destination or their plan. Commitment first, then practice and discover. You know, uh, a question when I talk, have talked over the years about gratitude and awe, and the question I sometimes hear is, how can one be grateful or be in awe at such a conflicted and miserable world? Anybody ever felt that thought? Yeah, no kidding. My answer is that my being conflicted and miserable doesn't fix or change anything at all. I want to share with you a story. It's one of my very favorite stories about learning what our true function is and making a commitment. It's a story that has some humor, it has resistance to making that commitment, and then the power of discovering, I'm going to call it happiness. Let's see what you think and what you would call it when I have read the story, told you the story. The story comes from a man named Jeffrey Canada. I don't know if you all know him. He is the founder of the Harlem Children's Zone uh, in New York City, which is a nonprofit that is dedicated to expanding the lives and school and education opportunities for at-risk uh, kids. And he's also, if I'm not mistaken, currently the chair of the board of the Children's Defense Fund as well. One summer, as Jeffrey Canada tells his story, he spent with his grandparents while his parents had to work. And Jeffrey was young at the time. He was maybe 12 years old. His grandparents were quite poor, but they had... Uh, scraped and saved, and they had bought a bit of a piece of property with not very much of a house on it. And while uh, they had just bought it, and uh, while the grandfather was working on the house, the plan was for Jeffrey and his grandmother to fix up the land. You see, the land uh, was tilted, and the back of the property was high, and the front where the house was was low, and so water was coming right down the hill, right into the house and into the basement, and then eroding the front of the property as well. So, on the very first morning of the summer, Jeffrey hops out of bed uh, to go down to breakfast, and you can imagine what he thinks his day is going to be about. He's 12 years old, he wants to play. It's summertime, it's not school. But instead, by the kitchen door, as he sits at the breakfast table, is a shovel. And a buck and several buckets actually. And the job that his grandmother explains at breakfast is to fix the land and to level out the tilt. Now, <laughs> Jeffrey's a big boy. He he's not unwilling. So right after breakfast, breakfast they grab the shovel and it might have been two. I don't know. But anyway, hit the shovel he had and the buckets, and they head up to the upper corner of the property. And Jeffrey starts digging up some dirt and he fills the biggest of the buckets and he starts carrying it to 70 yards down the hill, kind of like this, you know, and he's thinking, hmm, this is harder than it looks. And his grandmother didn't say much as he struggles with that bucket, uh, banging on his shin and on his leg and the sweat starts to pour off him. The next time his grandmother says to him, Jeff, you might want to try filling up two buckets half full and see how that works. Shucks, he says, one bucket's heavy enough. But it's his grandmother, he doesn't say this out loud. So he tries it, two buckets half full, and sure enough, with two buckets you can walk, even if it's kind of waddling like a duck down the hill. Two buckets half full of dirt. So a couple of weeks go by. And Jeffrey is looking at the land, and he's not seeing much difference. It feels like he's moved half the property and not changed the shape of the earth at all. And he's getting, what, frustrated and bored. So his grandmother says to him this time, well, she says, you've got to have a little faith. Oh, right, faith, he just says. I've heard about that before. But he doesn't say this out loud, it's his grandmother. And so his grandmother says, you know, Jeff, the work doesn't seem so hard when you sing a little song. 
So Keffer's thinking, this is really a dumb idea. It's hard enough carrying buckets up and down the hill without having to sing, but she starts singing, and soon enough, Jeffrey's singing along with her, and he's singing the song and carrying the buckets, and what do you know, it's not so bad. Maybe his grandmother does know something after all. And so for weeks this goes on. Weeks digging and carrying and singing, and Jeffrey's thinking, this is, this is just not normal. But he gets used to it. Finally, one day near the end of the summer, Jeffrey's grandmother says, Jeff, put your shovel down. I think we're done. Now, Jeff can't see much difference, and he says so. Well, she says to him, can you see the tilt? Hmm. No, we can't see the tilt anymore. We're done, she said. Now, Jeffrey's thinking, okay, so now we have a party or something, right? We invite people to come over and see what we've done here, or we write a letter to the newspaper paper, and we include a picture so that everybody can know exactly what we've done here. His grandmother knows what he's thinking, and she says, you know, Jeff, we'll know. God knows. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. What do you think the story has to teach us today? According to Jeffrey Kennedy, he learned that a few good people with a bucket of dirt and a bucket of faith can change the shape of the earth. Oh yes, he said. The other lesson is listen to your grandmother. She knows stuff. But I would add a third lesson. We see what we believe to be true. We see what we believe to be true. We may see that nothing in the world can be done. Or we may see the promises of God. And that's when, like Abram and Sarah long before us, we pick up the bucket of dirt and the bucket of faith and set out to find how the tilt of the earth may be altered. We find out by taking the first step and another, and then adding a song, and so discover ourselves born again in gratitude and awe. Same needs, different view. Amen. Be with the scripture, be with the gratitude and all. Allow yourself to fully arrive in this moment and to listen to God. If you wish, put your hands over your heart center. And be quiet with yourself and with your God.
come to the time of our joys and concerns. And let us now pray for those uh, persons, issues that lie before us and for whom we have special joy and concern. And though we pray at a distance from one another with words that feel very personal or very public, we also believe that God hears our prayers and shapes our lives as well as those lives for whom that we pray. And may all God's people be blessed, healed, and celebrated in our prayer. If anybody is watching on Zoom, they can send in the chat line a name. I forgot to mention that earlier. The names that we do have before us are Terry Boone, recovering from heart surgery, Tilda White, Lisa Solberg Sheldon, recovering from a broken hip. Yes, Lisa Solberg Sheldon, recovering from a broken hip. Also, Tilda White again in re rehabilitation, and Betty Moulton in hospice care. Let's take a moment. Uh, we are going to pray for a moment in a moment in this litany for our times, but I'd like to just take a moment for this, this season that feels so uh, conflicted and bitter, this election season. And my purpose in this prayer and whatever God gives to me to say is not to recommend or to provide a particular political position, but simply to pray because I'm feeling the heart and soul of our nation that hurts. And it is that to which I wish to invite God's care and concern. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, Creator God, it is in the symbol of your oneness that we remember that we are one with you and one with all living creatures. As citizens of our nation, we find ourselves torn apart with anger, frustration, conflicting theories in deep and fearful conspiracies. We come to a time in which as a, as a democratic nation we are looking to choose leadership that will take us into the future with wisdom and grace and courage. We ask that as citizens of this nation that we ourselves speak from a place of courage and wisdom and understanding all of the ways in which we ourselves get it wrong. Nonetheless, dear God, Remind us that we are not ultimately in charge, but you are. And that in following your way, your way of peace, your way of non-accusation, your way of listening, that we may be citizens not only of this nation, but of your heavenly kingdom. And that we ourselves may live with a sense of worthiness in a realm that shapes and alters the very lives we live. Help us, dear God, to be ourselves, your wise and courageous people in this season and at all times. In the name of Jesus Christ, our brother, our leader, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And so let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to say at all times, good and bad, conflicted and peaceful or peaceful. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so we have a litany uh, for our times, which I've adapted from something I found. Um, and I invite you to read the bold words. We pray to God, not as someone distant and aloof, but as someone near to us, even in the midst of chaos. We don't have to shout to get God's attention. God is close enough to hear our whispers from us on our knees. No matter how strong or weak we feel, no matter how much or how little faith we can muster, let's start by whispering this, give us peace. Gracious and loving God, you are the fire that leads us, the mover of mountains, the victor of impossible victories. You are Lord over earthquakes and tsunamis, over nations in turmoil and terrorist plots over starving children and fleeing refugees and prisoners tortured for their faith. You spread the sky with stars and set the earth spinning like a top. Your hand allows each mind to imagine and teaches each heart to beat with courage. And so we pray, though it seems impossible, again quietly, give us peace. Bring an end to violence and hatred and discord. Steady the feet that rush into conflict and the finger poised on the trigger. Bring ju justice to the downtrodden. Restoration to the marginalized and abused. Hope to the hopeless. Guide all those in positions of power, whether that power is political or physical or social, and give them right minds and hearts to use their power wisely. Give them and all of us the grace to admit when we are wrong and to seek forgiveness. Give us the grace to forgive. And this time a little louder. Give yes, us peace. peace. <clears throat> Help us to see your face in the faces of the people around us, no matter where we or they live. Give us courage to love one another, even when love seems like a big risk. Teach us to listen to those we disagree with, to hear stories that make us uncomfortable, Heal the bitterness in the world around us by healing our own hearts first, and again, still louder, grant us peace. Even now, in the midst of the darkness, we believe you are at work. We believe you are fashioning something new and beautiful out of our disastrous ruins. Give us patience as you work. Don't let us rush so quickly into peace that we fail to learn from the chaos. If you're revealing ugliness in our nation so that we can address it and transform it, don't let us be content to sweep it under the carpet. We want more than a temporary ceasefire. We pray for true peace, lasting peace, and still louder, your peace. If tragedy and chaos persist, keep us from apathy. Give us a heart that loves deeply enough to break again and again. Give us a passion for peace that only burns brighter as time goes by. 
Thank you that your love has never stopped blazing. Thank you that no matter how many times our human race fails, you have never abandoned us. When we are faithless, you remain faithful. We dare to believe along with King David in Psalm 27 that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And we dare to plead with you in the name of Jesus, still louder, make us bearers of your peace. Amen. In our hymn, which in two little sections here, because of the way the hymn book works, an old everybody goody, I love to tell the story.
my friends, our closing words. Let's begin together. We are the gifts God would give the world. May we speak truth, peace, and extravagant welcome wherever we go. And to this, let us all say together, Amen. Go in peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.